Hi guys, this is Jenny and welcome to my Eventophobia Diary. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about what I've covered so far, um, my experiences and talking to you about chapters 9, 10 and 11. So um, something did happen that I want to share with you and it was the fact that I did another challenge and this time it was kind of an unexpected challenge because it happened kind of spur of the moment. So what happened was um, one of my co-workers decided that it would be a good idea if we all went for uh, something to eat and then a movie. And we went that day, we planned it that day and um, I thought it would be a really good idea to go along because um, I just wanted to challenge myself in a situation that I couldn't really control at that time because it was so spur of the moment. So I went and um, the meal was fine, absolutely fine and um, when I got into the cinema I was actually feeling okay. But then a couple of minutes into the movie, I started to feel some anxiety rise. And I tried to control it with the skills that I have now with Thrive. And um, I was able to control it, but then it kept coming back and back. And all the, the unhelpful thinking styles started to come back into my head. And at the end of it, when I came out, I didn't feel very good about myself. I felt kind of like, um, I didn't feel confident anymore. So after I had um, the consultation with my Thrive Consultant, um, she actually told me that having a blip is totally normal and very common and that um, I shouldn't kind of dwell on it at all, that I should just keep going and thinking about the positives, um, which I am doing and um, there is actually a chapter on here which talks about that, about how you know we dwell on it and um, I did dwell on it for about three days actually and uh, now thinking about it, you know, I shouldn't have done that but, um, you know, Thrive is something that you really do have to enforce and reinforce and uh, you know kind of really 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 take takes extensive effort to to put in but it is so worth it and um, you know I feel a lot better for that I feel like it's something completely natural and human and um, um, that's not going to stop me from um, doing other challenges in the future so now that's over with let's talk about chapter 9 so chapter 9 is all about um, the language that we use. It actually talks about things like calling it a phobia instead of calling it a fear. It's kind of like you're catastrophizing one really small basic word to make it into something really big and unnecessary. So it just talks about how to change your words, um, which, which I think is really, really important because I always use really kind of over the top words like terrible and disgusting and horrendous and things like that. So changing it does kind of put another positive twist on it and it makes you feel a little bit better overall. So instead of saying like, oh my god, I could never, never, never be able to cope if I was sick, I would rather die. You know, saying something like that, um, which is totally over the top, um, is definitely going to cause you anxiety. So saying something like, I know that, you know, being sick is unpleasant, but I'm sure that I will have the skills to overcome it and uh, cope is going to make you feel so much better. So this is a really, really useful chapter. And um, after that, chapter 10 is talking about anxiety and stress, which I really, really need because um, anxiety is something that I've been really trying to control. So it does talk about two types of anxiety, which is extremely important to know, and I totally agree on it. And it also talks about the stressometer, and this is kind of like a dial in a car. Um, and it just basically says that, you know, if you're really stressed and the dial is on full, it's really hard to be able to calm yourself down and uh, cope with that. So you really need to try to not be stressed out. And um, it does talk about, you know, how you can do that and uh, managing your thinking, basically. So that was really useful for me and really kind of um, summarised what I was feeling when I had that blip. Now, chapter 11 is something that is really, really important and I think something that really put a um, perspective on um, the, the whole way I think. It actually talks about two things, which is field dependent and field independent. Field dependent is just how you generalise things. But field independent is how you can kind of stop yourself and take a step back and really look at the bigger picture. So that is so important and um, one of the examples that it kind of brings up in the book is the Stockdale Paradox and this is so important and I really wish that um, you could read all of it but it just talks about a man who kind of coped with being in a in a in a prisoner camp and 
um, this this paradox, or in other words, this kind of this kind of way of thinking, um, is very similar to what I kind of made for myself, and that is the fact that I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. So um, as you can see, um, I have um, the the Elven leaf that um, Elrond the elf. Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about if you don't actually understand or have seen the movies or read the books, but he gave this to each of the fellowship, including Frodo. And um, the reason why I bought it and am wearing it is because in the movie, Frodo um, has has the one ring. He, he's, he's got this one ring, um, the ring of all power, and it's been brought upon him. He didn't want it to happen. He wished it never came to him, kind of like emetophobia. So... Even though he's never stepped out of the Shire and he has to go and, you know, destroy this ring um, along with his friend Samwise Gamgee. You know, they go and they've never been outside before and Frodo doesn't have, you know, doesn't have the strength almost to go and do it. But he does, you know, through the thick and thin, through all the sweat and the blood and everything, he goes and he destroys it. And that kind of motivation makes me feel, you know how I feel with anemetophobia. Like, I didn't want it to happen to me, but it has happened. Um, but in reality, it actually hasn't happened to me, I'm doing it myself. So, in a way, it's not really like Frodo. But it is in the fact that, you know, he 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 thought he didn't, he didn't have all these skills, this bravery, this courage, but in the end, he did. And uh, Samwise Gamgee was like his motivation, his encouragement, and that's what I'm going to be for myself. So, um, I will call it the Frodo and Sam paradox for myself. So I think it's really useful if you have some kind of thing that you can imagine um, that will help you, something that you're really passionate about that can help you, um, you know, understand more about yourself and understand how you can overcome this and be powerful. So like I said, this is an extremely and extremely good chapter. And uh, not only does it talk about the Stockdale paradox, but it also talks about... Um, you know, going into kind of deeper subjects uh, like significant others and also, you know, about um, cycles of behaviour that you might have and um, kind of breaking down uh, things for you to see, um, kind of breaking down things for you to see in uh, something called interrupting cycles of behaviour. This is very important because it kind of explains to you step by step of what you might be thinking and how you can change it, how you can kind of go in and interrupt that that kind of limiting thought that you might have. So this is really good and um, what I've also been talking to my Thai consultant about is um, one of the things that I really want to challenge myself on is actually going up a mountain, kind of like Frodo. And um, I've always been scared of going up a mountain because, you know, the roads are really winding and where I live in Chiang Mai, in Thailand, um, it's just full of mountains and I've never been up there, even though it's, you know, beautiful and everybody's raving about it because I'm, I'm scared I'm going to be sick. So I said to her that I was going to do that maybe in a week or a month, but she said that I, maybe I should do it um, sooner than I think. So I think I might do it. I just might do it. I'm going to have to see. But if I do, I'll tell you about it next week. So, looking forward to talking to you next week. Bye guys.